It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the NFC East. It's the Washington Commanders and the New York Giants, next on Madden Football. It's a picturesque afternoon for football in the Northeast, and EA Sports comes to you from MetLife Stadium just across the Hudson River from New York City. Today, longtime foes square off in the NFC East as it'll be the Washington Commanders taking on the New York Giants. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, these Giants seem to be a team on the improve. They won their first playoff game since Super Bowl 46 last year. Now, what needs to happen to take that next step? They just need to continue to amass talent, get those guys going, and become contributors. And on the offensive side of the ball, become much more explosive in the passing game. Meanwhile, for the Commanders, this is a team that many think could be the fourth best in the NFC East, but they've got a pretty strong defense that's going to probably keep them in some ball games. Their investment in talent has certainly paid off. Number four against the pass a season ago. Number four overall in total defense. Nothing to shake a stick at. If they get good quarterback play, look out. Time Panther Graham Gano has his set for his start as we are underway from MetLife Stadium. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The commander's set to go to work on offense, and they've handed the controls to this man in his second NFL season, former Tar Heel Sam Howell. Howell got the nod from commander's leadership to be the team's starter this year. A nice bump for last year's fifth-round pick. One start as a rookie and didn't look bad at all winning the team's finale. And let's not forget, this is a guy who was once viewed as a first-round pick. So there's plenty of promise hidden beneath the surface. To throw right away is Howell. And his first look is incomplete. Absolutely nowhere to go with the football. He's just going to put this one in the Hudson River. Maybe he's a little fortunate he didn't get called for grounding because that one was well over everyone's head. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing here, Howell. Got this complete to Jahan Dotson. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Now the second-year man from Alabama, it's Brian Robinson. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. That's caught inside the 20. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Foul down to throw it. Blitz coming and down he goes. Isaiah Simmons 
Getting by the offensive line and dropping the quarterback. And it's never going to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Powell out of the shotgun. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Buried behind the line by Aziz Ojolari. It's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between let them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. Sly able to put this one through. And the Commanders get out to a 3-0 lead. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. to the made field goal. Here's Sly to kick this one away. And from his end zone, here's Gary Brightwell. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. It didn't take long to see our first penalty of the game, did it? We always talk about everyone wanting to get into the game in a hurry. The officials did as well. So the hold on special teams backs him up all the way inside the 15 to start. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. That good for 22 with a first down. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. Jamin Davis there to bring him down. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. Second down and eight. They'll go to Barkley again. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Now Jones. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. First down, Giants on a pickup of 14. So after several rushes to start the game, Charles, they go to the air there and get a nice completion. Nice mix up on the play calling, right? Establish the running game, make the defense think you're going to do it again, and then hit them over the top. Now you've got them betwixt and between. They don't know which way you're going to come at them. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Up the middle with Barkley. A decent run there following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. And credit the tackle to Percy Butler. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Hodgins in motion. Running again with Barkley on second down. 
Well, now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. Throwing Jones. Rush coming and he's taken down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack and it leads to fourth. I don't know if he was just working through progressions or just unaware of the pressure, but no matter. Excellent work by the defense to get him to the ground before he could escape the pocket. On fourth down, Jamie Gillen on to punt for the Giants. Back deep here, Jamison Crowder. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The commander's going to retake the field for drive number two. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and ten. Start on the ground with Robinson here. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. Five yards, now it's third and five. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. From the gun on third down, Howell. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have a commander's first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. And that's one of those where it feels like backyard football in a sense. You say, forget about the route. Just run to the open spot in the middle of the field, and I'll find you. Good throw, good concentration on the catch, and they pick up the first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On the counter, this is Robinson. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Someone's looking fresh, and his old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block if you're an offensive lineman. Nice early burst, nice gain, too. Second down and a little more than a yard here. And they're going to motion dots into the left. Oh, here's a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Robinson. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. It's easy to celebrate every good run by Robinson because stories don't get much better than his last year. Shot during an attempted robbery just 13 days before the regular season. He made it back by week five and played in 12 games for Washington. Even better, gained almost 800 yards, leading the commanders. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Dexter Lawrence finding his way through defensively for the stop. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Al, he'll look to throw it. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 28. 23 yards to pick up there. Up, 
So the drive takes them into Giants territory now, first and 10, as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Here's Hal. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone is going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Now a second and ten. Powell. Over the middle, brought in by Dotson. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Looking to throw again to the right side and complete to Thomas. Now he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. The Commanders went for it, but they cannot pick up the first. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in, and if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high because mentally you're saying, hey, you're in the red zone, we're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. They'll start out on the ground at Saquon Barkley. And somehow he's going to get a yard out of this as he fought through that first contact. It's second down. But it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Second down, here's Barkley again. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Now Jones, this one goes out wide for Barkley. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. And the Washington offense going back to work. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, OK, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit if they're in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. Well, they sent the power set out there, and their job is to be man-on-man -man and move people so they can run the football. But that time, too many men didn't get moved in the box defensively. They end up throwing him for a loss. How from the gun. It's caught inside the 25. 
He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. An explosive 38-yard pickup. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And, you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. Now how? It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. On first down, Hal. This is caught. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. This defense is really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. And this offense on third down today, they've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Robinson will try to pick it up. And this time he is in. Yes. Brian Robinson, Jr., a three-yard touchdown run. And they are able to add on to their advantage. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And the lead grows to 10 0. So that winds up a seven play drive all told. And it was capped off by the touchdown run from Brian Robinson. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. On the return, here's Gary Brightwell. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The New York set to take the field. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. They begin with a run by Barkley. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Bringing him down there, Jonathan Allen. Being strong up the middle is imperative. I don't care what your sport, but in football, when you've got a D tackle who can contribute not only to occupying bodies, but also making plays on the ball carrier, that's when you have the cornerstone of a solid run defense. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Throwing the out route and complete. It's Campbell. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down.
They'll try the right side here. Barkley. It's a room to maneuver. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. What I continue to hear from running backs and offensive linemen is how often they're actually getting together to watch film so they can get in sync with each other, understand blocking patterns better, how a running back likes to cut, what he wants to do. And boy, it all came together on that one. That's one where they watch it and say, hey, we, we did everything we were supposed to do right there. That looked like the play we drew up yeah, and designed. Cool. And then we got to see it unfold in real time. Montez Sweat with a tackle. I'm wondering, partner, if they might need to sub him out for a play or two because after that long run he just had on the previous play, he might not have all of his breath back. Yeah, and they went right back to that well. Different result. Jones to throw on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Now Jones on third down. That is caught. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 18. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Looking to throw. Jones. Bellinger holds it in out left side. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. So the completion results there in 9 yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. Saquon Barkley running right, and he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Only gets a yard, but it's enough to set him up first and goal. One thing I do know that offensive linemen like, they like a guy who's carrying the ball that will take what is blocked. Not try and create a big play and maybe take a loss, not try and go where the blocking isn't, but if it's just all that's there and you just put your head and your shoulders down and get that, you get the respect of the big guys up front. Touchdown, Giants! Daniel Jones able to connect with Sterling Shepard. And the Giants have cut it back within a score. And that drive we just saw that culminated in a touchdown, exactly what many offenses are looking for. Sustained ones that can impose their will on the other team. Graham Gano on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10 at 7 now. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Touchdown here to kick it away. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The Washington offense set to take over. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets them up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. 
He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Two yards to go, second down. Again, it's Robinson. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. From the 42-yard line, here's second down and one. This time they'll throw it with Hal. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. That'll put him at 66 receiving yards now for the game, and he's got a first down. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds, because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? It'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. Back to the ground with Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. Brandon, that's what you call being manhandled at the point of attack. And I know the offensive line gets a lot of blame for that one. But occasionally, the defense just knows what you're going to do. Maybe they scouted it perfectly. Maybe someone tipped it off. But on that play, it had no... And the defense, they get to Howell. He'll go down here. Aziz Ojulari. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. The offense takes the field, and we turn our attention to Saquon Barkley. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. Here's second and 10. Jones fakes the give to Barkley. Pass incomplete. The offense on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Back to throw. Jones. Short throw, going to be caught by Waller. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. 
He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Washington ready to try again on offense. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Big Leonard Williams, the one who came in and got him. When Leonard Williams was picked in the 2015 NFL Draft, I compared him to Merlin Olsen, and I got a lot of grief about it. Did you just see that play there? Did you see how he made that move and made that tackle? That was Merlin Olsen-esque yeah, right just, there. I just perked up when you said Merlin Olsen. Yeah, a lot of people said, hey, that's too much, too far, and maybe it is early, but I think this guy has a chance of fulfilling that. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's third and seven. And Howe will throw it. Taking a shot for Samuel. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. You know, I've been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Fair catch single four and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return, and it'll be giant football first and 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. Throwing to start the drive. Jones, a short one here, secured by the tight end Waller. And that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. Jones signaling, let's go, let's go. Try to get his guys up to the line. Jones now looking to throw on second down. Flushed out right. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm. But he was more than happy to dissect him with his legs for that first down pickup. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Jones on first down. His throw incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. On second and ten, Jones. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking that time to get it to Paris Campbell. And that takes us from second to third down. Looking to throw. Jones. And incomplete on the deep ball. 
and they're not going to go quietly into this halftime break. They know they're in for a fight, so they're trying to make every possession count. They took the big shot there, but it winds up incomplete. On to punt, Jamie Gillen. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports. This one's been as good as ever, Coach. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. Okay, Coach, it was a thanks solid as first always. Half of football this for the one's still in the game as Ryan we welcome Robinson. you back for quarter number three. He wound up the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Tight football game thus far. 10-7 to score as we resume action on EA Sports. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. The Giants offense set to begin this third quarter. This is a game, Charles, that's been fairly starved for offense. Really not much in that first half. We'll see if they can get something going here as we look toward the third quarter. And not just a chance to finally get a little more offense going, but to erase that small deficit they currently trail by. I think they'd send a pretty powerful message to the opposite sideline if they drive it right down the field coming out of the half. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll drop it off with Saquon Barkley. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. A good run there off right tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Back to throw. Jones. And this will be caught. It's Isaiah Hodgins. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down and a yard. Barkley inside handoff. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. They go play action here on first down. Short throw, gonna be caught by Waller. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it, and it'll be second down. Looking to throw. Jones. And he overshoots. 
shot in there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for New York. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. First possession of the second half now for Washington. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson to about the 23. Oh, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Out of the gun, it's Howell. That's out to the flat for Gibson. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. On third down, Robinson. Oh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And the Giants ready to come out now. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. 85 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run, so now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Here now, second and four. They'll run it again with Barkley. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Back to throw. Jones. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. Shifts by him. They get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down for the Giants as they pick up 12. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction.
Now Jones. That is incomplete. Second and ten. Throwing Jones. Incomplete. And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Back to throw again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. On third and ten, they go flying past the marker and get nearly 40 yards. He just had the feeling that sooner or later, someone was going to come up with that one play. Neither team has really done a whole lot offensively, but here's one that pays off to the tune of big yardage, and it's one that could maybe get this group in gear. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. A quick throw there is incomplete. Darren Waller, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's going to be sacked back in the 23-yard line. It'll go as a loss of three on the sack, and it brings up third down. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And the deliver there is that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Barkley trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Good work there. Holding him out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two? Maybe even three more plays. Second and goal from the one. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And he is in. Touchdown, Giants. Daniel Bellinger punching it in from a yard away. And the Giants have taken the lead here in this third quarter. An excellent, long, sustained offensive drive. And now they can look across the field and see a defense that looks a little bit beaten down. Right now, as an offensive coordinator, you're thinking to yourself, can I dial up the knockout punch? Gano the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it ends with a one yard touchdown run. Touchdown here to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Washington offense heading out 
Uh, Charles, a very uninspired effort. The last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Howell and the Commanders come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll start with a give to Robinson. Fighting through the tackle at the 30. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of 7 past the 30 to the 32. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top, or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. Well, they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Dexter Lawrence that time in on the stop. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you're talking about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. <laughs> and what a big time play there. Al now to throw it. Man up. Robinson. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants 39. Last play they got stuffed at the line. Different story here over 20 yards. This one was all about clearing space for this play to work because he's going to leak out of the backfield to his right and then angle his way up the field and a really pretty throw to put it on him and create the big play downfield. So again from the 39 this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. Powell out of the shotgun. Steps away to his left. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. up the middle and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage they'll wind up losing three and now it's third down plays like that when you see the athleticism of a guy over 300 pounds you, you forget that they can do that they're so athletic yeah and i love how it all came together he won the leverage battle of the line of scrimmage then he won the battle with his hands to shed the blocker and how about the agility to get into the backfield and run him down Giants defense that time in pass coverage. Fourth down. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down. And he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. So now on comes the field goal unit. And wow, this is no ordinary try here. And this one is no good. He missed it. And that will keep this a four-point game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. The last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown. So here, much easier, Charles, with his better starting field position. I love your sarcasm, but I love even more your observation because, look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're going to put more points up on the board. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Isaiah Hodgins was his intended receiver, and it's second down. Looking to throw. 
Jones. I can assure you, setting up the screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense, and a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Back to throw, Jones. And that's incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback, run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. Here's Jamie Gillen now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So out comes Washington's offense to take over. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. The 71 yards for him on the ground now on that, his 20th carry of the ball game. Nothing too fancy, just a carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against his 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? The nose guard, right? Got to be able to move him, otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle. Nice job. Look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. Touchdown, Washington. Brian Robinson, Jr., with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Commanders have taken the lead here in the final seconds of the third quarter. Uh, he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. An extra point by Sly is up and good, and it's now 17-14. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And he returns this to the 22. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Jones on first and 10 to Barkley on the check down. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. So both teams trade touchdowns in the third as we're through three quarters of play. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. From the 24 now, here's second down and eight. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. And once again, the commander defense stout against the run game. They drop him for a second straight play. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. Now Jones, off play action. He's got his target. That's complete, and he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. One heck of a third down conversion. 33 yards. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit 
to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Off the play fake, Jones. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Up the middle with Barkley. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Operating from the gun, Jones and Waller taking it in over the middle. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 25-yard line. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking again for Waller, and he's got him again. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. They go back to the ground now with Barkley. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. After a couple of seasons of battling injuries, the former number two overall pick returned to Pro Bowl form with over 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. Just as important, played 16 games and handled over 350 touches, essentially carrying the Giants' offense. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. 96 yards rushing for him now to this point. But well, partner, if the defense isn't going to adjust and they keep giving them those five, six, seven yard runs over and over, they're likely to run it the whole way to the end zone. They'll be more than happy to take the yardage available and save some of their other plays in the playbook for another time. On second down, here's Barkley. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. Operating from the gun, Jones. Touchdown! Isaiah Hodgins, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Giants answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth-quarter lead. A plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Extra point try, good by Gano, and that will make this a four-point game. Touchdown here to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. 
The Commanders preparing for their next possession. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. The first and 10 here for Hal and the Commanders at their own 21. They'll start on the ground with Gibson. They'll get this to the 24 and it's second down. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Here's second and seven. Now Hal. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. So five yards here, five on the play. And now two yards to go on third down. They'll run with Gibson. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On first down, right back to Gibson. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Now a second and two. Hand off now to Robinson. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards there and a first down. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Back to throw, Howell. Complete, it's Dodson. So the completion good for seven there. And that will bring up second down. Now they go play action with Howell. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. Maybe a little over-anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. This offense so far on third down, they're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This time it's third and three. That is caught. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 31-yard line. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. But well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. And once more, Hal back to the air. Throw to the right here, taken in by McLaurin. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that'll bring up second down. Throwing here, Howell. He gets it to Thomas. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 13-yard line. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Now we've got whistles here before the snap, and I believe this is going to be on Washington. 
And the crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Still first down. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. It's Howell with another throw. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage, but now they're looking at third and 10. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full 10 yards here. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And they'll rally and stop him short of the first down at about the six. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And the Commanders are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. He's been tough for this defense to handle over 100 yards. You kind of knew that they were going to him on that play, didn't you? They certainly did. That's one of those situations where you simply say, my best runner over my best blockers, let's go ahead and pick it up. And I don't care if they know it on the other side. Here we come, and they got it done. Here we go, first and goal. Robinson will score. Touchdown, Commanders. This is a time of game where offensive lines can really dictate a team's fortunes. It's been a tough battle. They've been out there for a long time. But this was a question of who can wear down who. And that's excellent work to put a long drive together and finish it with a touchdown run to take the lead. Important extra point up and through. So it's now a three-point game here in the closing stages as a field goal now can only tie it. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. So now Jones and the Giants down 24-21, a minute 54 on the clock. Now they need at minimum three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Jones. Pass complete to Shepard. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. That gets him the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Jones. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. They'll try again here, second and ten. To throw is Jones. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. 
The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Jones. He finds him again, Saquon Barkley. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Well, they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. They'll come up first and 10 here. Here's Jones. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. Under 50 seconds to play. Here's second and ten. Here's Jones to throw. This one goes out wide for Barkley. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and 10. Now Jones. And a little floater there is incomplete. And now defensively in the two minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. Another try, second and 10 now. Jones looking around. A quick pass here. He's got Shepard. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. But just a gigantic play here, both sides. This is third and inches. Jones. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Giants first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to tie things up in the final minute. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net. But they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dime.
So the first chance of this overtime will go to Washington as we are back underway. And no return here to begin the overtime session. That'll be a touchback. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards, the final tally. So they come out throwing in the extra session and get a nice hook up right away. Tells you a lot about what a coach feels about his team, doesn't it? That type of a play in overtime. So many people in this situation play not to lose instead of playing to win. That throw there tells you exactly what they're trying to get done. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. Bobby O'Karake making that tackle. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. From the 47, it's second and five. Again, it's Robinson. And they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 162 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. He continues to be dominant running the football. I mean, keep feeding him, right? Yeah, you should because what he's put up already is really like a two-game total. Give him a lot of credit, but give the rest of the offense credit as well. The big guys up front and the receivers on the perimeter, everyone's getting involved blocking people downfield. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. And Howell will throw it. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession, but the coverage held. It goes incomplete. It's third and four. Big play here, trying to keep this opening drive of overtime alive. Out of the gun, it's Howell. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have a commander's first down. And he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. That last pass puts him over 300 yards now in the game. More importantly, though, big first down here at OT. And the team around him has a lot of confidence now after picking up that first down. Everyone seems a little more energized. But did I hear you before the game call in and say, this is my quarterback for your fantasy <laughs> league because he just gave you a good stat, didn't he? He did, and I appreciate it. This will be caught at Samuel. Uh, he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. 18 yards that time to push him up first and goal. Defensively now, the ultimate challenge. Of course, the ball gets in the end zone. This thing's over. And I remember my coach has always talked about in goal line situations, and now you're in overtime where they have to keep them to three points. Otherwise, this wing is done. Win your individual battle within the framework of the team defense. Beat that guy across from you and make a play. I expect them to attack on defense and not sit back. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Four yards there on the touchdown run. I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. 
Give him credit for making it happen. Sly for the PAT. And they will take a seven point lead now. That time, a nine play drive, and it results in a four yard touchdown run. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Here's Brightwell to return it. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Throwing Jones. Dancing to his left. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. After that sack, third and long, tough spot for Jones and the Giants. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They have pressure coming, and they got him once again. That's Deron Payne with a sack that time. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. Jones now throwing on fourth down. And he is going to go down in the end zone. It's a safety, and the game is over. An absolutely dominating series from that pass rush to record the safety. Three sacks in a row shouldn't be possible against an NFL offensive line, but there they are, dropping him on three straight reps, the last of which came in the end zone for two points. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League, but fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. How'd you like to be those defensive coaches, though? That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan, they all scout, they all think.